Hello everyone, welcome to the weekly Infrastructure Jenkins team meeting. Uh, we are the 23 of August, uh, uh, April, oh, I need summer, April 2024. Uh, around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, who is missing son, obviously, Hervé Lemeur, who has son, obviously, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merle, and Kevin Martins. <laughs> Let's get started with the announcements. So the weekly release um, uh, is out almost. So uh, where and packages are okay. Um, I saw a message thanks Kevin for the asynchronous updates that really helps. So change log is out. Uh, whip on the Docker image. We are one tag and a build away of the new image. Uh, just as uh, synchronous, Mark, do you plan to do it? Should I do it? Just to be sure we don't try to push a tag at the same time. Do what, uh, Damien? Uh, do... Creating the tag uh, to Docker, the Docker. Docker image tag has been created for 2.455 oh. and the container images for the weekly are available. They became available about 19 oh. minutes ago. I okay. haven't checked for Windows. I've got to do more detailed checks because I want to be sure that Java 21 is correctly updated, Java 17 is correctly updated, and Java 11 is not updated because Alpine's not yet available. So I've got some more work to do to test, but the images look good. Tag created, build, publish, in progress. Okay. I don't have anything else on the new release. Uh, Stefan, is okay? Is it okay for you? I'm gonna start with the team days off. So we will have a few days off, frost days off. Tomorrow I'm alone. Uh, Thursday, Hervé is alone. Hervé and I are there Friday, but Stefan is out. Monday, I won't be there. So until the next week, we will have limited availability. Uh, so for any task that we plan for the upcoming milestone, please don't hesitate. If you feel like it will be hard, we can discuss or hand over to someone else. Uh, Stefan, do you feel if the Docker image uh, for the weekly comes early enough, are you? do you think you can deliver it or do you want to pass the under here? I, I was just uh, trying to build the weekly image right now. So okay, I, cool. I will try to, yes. As Mark said, some Windows image are there, so I assume the default GDK 17 Debian is already there. That should be okay. That's the one we use. Yes. Don't hesitate if you see you don't have time, just uh, raise the message. Yeah, I'm just saying no problem. It's just tell if you don't have time, and then we will hand over. Okay. I, I okay. I I am doing that right now, and if I really have to go before it's done, I will let you know. Cool, thanks. Uh, so, uh, limited availability. Um, uh, uh, Stefan out this week. Harvey out tomorrow. Damian out Thursday and Monday. Is there anything else around the days of organization of the tasks? No, okay. Uh, Mark, uh, AWS sponsor chip renewal for 2025. Yeah, so AWS is accelerating their schedule when they'll decide what to allocate and what not to allocate as donations to open source projects. They've asked us to submit the application before end of day tomorrow. Uh, I'll submit that today. Uh, that way I can report to the board me submitting it as a member of the governing board has a, an element of politically uh, visibility correct thing saying, I'm a member of the board. The board is asking for this donation. So uh, unless somebody has strong objections, I'll plan on submitting that today. Looks good. Yeah. And thanks very much for moving towards consuming. I'm hoping that they won't look at our consumption until for another month or so before they evaluate this. They've said they will ch decide on the 2025 donations by June or July of this year. 
So they're going to decide much earlier than the start of calendar 2025 who they're going to who they're going to support with donation. I hope so too. Uh, we have started creating uh, at least IAM accounts uh, with the help of Stefan yesterday. Uh, just to be sure, I'm not the only one working on that. So they can already start to see some kind of activity, but it's just roles and permission for now. Do you have other announcements, folks? No other announcements from me. Okay. Uh, upcoming calendar. So we will have a new weekly next week, 30 April, as usual. Um, the next LTS would be 4050. Is that correct? Close. 2.452.1. Oh, yeah. Better. And it's 15, 15 May. 15 or... May. That's correct. 15 May of 2024. And Kevin has kindly, kindly been willing to start the work on creating the change log and the upgrade guide. Uh, Alex Brandis is the release lead. And Alex has started the checklist already. Nice. Any question on the LTS, folks? Nope. Let's have a look at the Jenkins advisories. Okay. I definitely did a copy and paste ish error. Now. 17 so we had yeah uh, last week lts went well and that has been a security advisory but that wasn't worth a secured or secrets release it was just something really scoped on age so the security advisory has been published like the previous lts Uh, next major event, I don't remember, I don't know. We have past Silicon, DevOx is past, and no one was DevOx in France. I don't know what will be the next major events. It's not major, but I'm speaking at Mile High Agile in about two weeks. So in Denver, Colorado. Mark speaking at Agile. Mile High. And like Mile High Agile. So because Denver is... Uh, one mile above sea level, they call it the mile high city. And so <laughs> it's Fair. mile high agile. Okay. I know it, it's how many, and how many meters is that? Well, it's about 1,600, right? So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm absolutely late today on retrieving the notes, but hopefully I triggered it before the meeting. Okay, so what were we able to finish during the past milestone? Up. Uh, first, thanks for all the spam. Looks like we have more and more spam users. Is it because we act more quickly than before? or No, it's because I'm actually recording that I did it when I do it instead of hiding the fact that I did it. Okay. So this is so, Mark confessing to doing having having deleted users more than it is that there's any change in rate. The the rate is about the same as it's always been. Cool. Thanks. I assume so that then, it's still helpful for me to do that. If it's not helpful, I'll stop. It's just my assumption was if it helps people realizing, hey, we've got spam and I mark them as done, no one wastes any time on it and it's correctly recorded mm -hmm. that we did it. No, that's that's good. That allows us to have a track and to measure such thing. We will see the trend emerge then. That's not a problem for us. And so if it's okay for you, let's continue. Um, so we have upgraded all the controllers to the LTS version. So thanks everyone involved. Uh, since there was a security advisory, even if it wasn't, really um, exploitable, at least on the private controller, still uh, safe, better safe than sorry. Um, we had an unexpected uh, side effect of uh, the IRM migration. 
uh, because uh, um, I never spent the time required when I did it and I should have, so sorry for that, on templating the maximum amount of nodes that we can have on a cluster because we have an input parameter which tells how much ports to use for each VM for outbound SNAT connections. So since we increased the number, it wasn't automatically increased, causing network issues on the private cluster. That has been fixed uh, and no more SNAT problem again. Uh, so yeah, there might be, let's say Terraform uh, templating improvement here. Any question? Um, we had a password, Azure uh, Active Directory password expiration that has been fixed. Uh, so rotation of credential on both the, uh, the states and the Terraform user credentials. We required both. So that has been an opportunity to start marking the expiration date as explicit based on um, the work that Hervé did, instead of using a service principal password, we moved to an Azure password. Not only we can see the date on the UI now, because the service principal password is not visible on the UI, while an Azure ADIP application password is. So that's what Hervé uh, discovered, or at least mentioned and shared with the team. And based on that, marking explicit uh, uh, expiration date will help because Stefan started an automated process with update CLI. In that particular case, we won't, that's a private repository and there is no credential for the cloud. There is no shared state. So uh, we might have to, to adapt, but the goal is to have a pull request as an actionable, even if we require to merge and apply it manually, still way better than a shared calendar. And the work that Stefan did can be generalized on different repositories here. I've opened an issue about the privacy and uh, the, the concern we have for these updates. So that's a separated issue that will be triaged today. Um, take time to review it and see if I missed any information because it was extracted from my brain. So I might not be clear on the issue. Any question? Nope. Um, Thanks, Stefan. Stefan, can you just give us a summary? Because I'm not sure I remember everything about the Let's Encrypt Azure Service Principle uh, credential update. That's exactly what you explained. It's now um, followed by um, uh, update CLI manifest, and it allows us to have automatic pull requests to do the job. And in fact, we have a manual step to do, but we we can uh, rely on a pull request automatically automatically created to remember us to do the the work. In this case, it's the, it's a um, Azure principal uh, password expiration that uh, allow the process to uh, trigger the creation of a C name or of a sorry, it's not a C name, it's a, it's a DNS record to comply with the let's encrypt process and to be able to. Uh, to renew the certificate automatically, so so yeah, now it's it's okay. easier. Thanks. And, and by got, the way, the informations in the body of the pull request on what cool. to do. That's really useful. And if I remember com correctly, now you renew the both certificate rights. Mm -hmm. yes. Cool. Such okay. interested. Yes, and I did. Yes, I did. Uh, the, the um, let's encrypt renew process to, to to make sure that it's working. Yep, makes sense. That was the first time we used that new process, so makes sense to go at, until the end. Nice, nice job. Any question? Next one, uh, we had we finished the steps to migrate release CI on RM64 controller. So that's official, the last weekly, uh, the two last weekly and the last LTS releases were done from a, an IRM controller, not agent though. So congratulations. <laughs> and same for infra CI. So everything was done more than seven days ago, but we had a lot of cleanup steps. So thanks Stefan for taking care of this. We have removed all uh, remnants from the old controllers or all the disks. And we have uh, 
issues happen with uh, eventually long-term steps that we discover during that process for improvement, such as migrating data to different kind of storage, but these steps are closed. So we can we can move on on the RM64 uh, subject. Congratulations. Thank you. Any question on the RM or controller storage topics? Okay. Uh, we had two issues closed as not planned. Always the same pattern. Someone asks a question and we never get an answer when we ask some. So. Uh, any objection if we continue that pattern after two or three days without any answer, we close the issue. Cool, thanks for that the pattern works for me. I've seen thumbs ups, so cool, thanks folks. Don't hesitate to do the same, of course. Uh, work in progress. Um, let's start with, oh, I'm not sure we have a few. Let's start with the service principle password. Uh, that's not the most important, but we need to do it uh, soon. So that's why I'm starting. So the uh, again, a credential that we renew regularly. And that one, the service principal password, is used by CI Jenkins IO to be able to connect to Azure and spin a virtual machine agent and delete them afterwards. That expires the 13th. So we need to update it on CI before Monday included because today it will be too late. Uh, so Stefan started uh, and did, and I think it's merged and it went well, sorry, I've updated the issue. So uh, the same pattern we mentioned on the two past uh, credential expiration related issues, the same process has been applied by Stefan here. Um, yes, but once... this one yeah. doesn't have the information yet. We we need to improve oh, the request and put yep. what we we do now to to use that certificate need to be uh, provided in the body of the the of that CLI pull request created to ease the next processes. On what to do when merged because yes, we don't because it's the yeah. first time exactly that's the first time and we don't automate. Uh, encrypted the new credential uh, on subs. We cannot, uh, we haven't found a way to do it. Uh, cool. But the pull request at least is the first actionable because at least that will replace the calendar events. Yes, that was the, the aim of it. Um, so next steps. That's why I ask if we can if we can provide an issue with Blitzilla because I don't know if, if a pull request is good enough for those meetings to have just the pull request or if we really need to have an issue in the help desk uh, matching that pull request because if if yes, we have to add an action in the update CLI to add uh, uh, an issue pointing to the pull request we are creating to be available for that meeting. Uh, I will separate both concerns for now and okay. instead rely on a GitHub action that run regularly on the help desk repository. So it will take care of eventually uh, using update CLI though, that reads the expired dates. And then instead of creating a new pull request, just run a JASH issue create on the help desk. Or yeah, or maybe it could run on each repository and create them. Yeah. No, that, that's a good idea. Sorry, I was, I don't know. my brain pops everywhere. Um, so uh, with this update CLI automated process, create an issue with or without the pair so we can track on LDesk so we can track it for meetings and replace calendar event. Good point. And the third thing on that topic is that factorize some of the code to reuse the same on all Terraform repositories. Uh, that's the right moment. We started on one repository, repositories. Uh, then the second repository, we have the third, the private one that might or might not reuse them. But at least now we have two repositories using the same code. We know it works somehow. 
So the next step will be to factorize and update both repository to use the same. So we will do the fixes only on one location. Next step for this issue. Um, merge. Could it, could it, sorry? Could it be the case for having a clean uh, uh, specific repo but opening pull request in other repository. Or do yes. we like, want to keep the key in the repository if it's opening a request on? You can do both. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, I have a personal opinion to rely on what Stefan proposed because having the update CLI closer to the code, we don't forget to update it. But depending on the kind of process you want to implement, that could be technically possible to have something running on LDesk and pulling every information. And the Stefan pattern is more pushing to the centralized location. So it depends on what you want to achieve, but that's technically possible. I think that Olivier worked on a version uh, of, of the CLI that uh, is more close from GHA, GHA GitHub Action, and is working from a dedicated repository, but is using some kind of intelligence to understand what he needs to upgrade on other repository. He showed me that in the post dem, so he's working on that kind of, of way of working. But I agree, I'd rather have the, the CLI close to the code for us to to match what we need to, to follow within that um, uh, repo. Repo, yep. To, to just to explain what why I thought about that is mm -hmm. I was thinking about uh, a process looking at every Terraform code and uh, recognizing date pattern with potential inclusion. So we would not have, have to create an, a manifest for each new that time, everything. If it's a start but time. To, yeah, but with a little bit of logic and exclusion possibility of exclusion i think it should be doable but yeah it's it's a next step if we want it's not so uh... oh yeah that 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 could make sense to have a generic process that auto discover everywhere uh the dates or yep that could be maybe um Technically, updates I already have auto discovery system that that it tries to generate the manifest instead of us, and we can int them uh, eventually, like the panda bot is doing. I think that's what you mentioned, Stefan. I think that's what I I saw, but that was a work in progress. So I'm not sure. The 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 problem with the auto discovery that's what the panda bot does. It's really strict. You cannot use all the power of updates here. I run custom workflow. So depends. That's mm -hmm. worth exploring. Something else, mm -hmm. an intermediate also. Uh, there are, um, we have the feature that work out of the box since a few months on update CLI of policies. You can share policies or a set of scripts somewhere. So your manifest, it's like a composite action for GHA. You can, yes, you have to create a manifest for each repository, but each manifest say, hey, run that generic uh, thing. That's all, and here I'm a specific. So that's that uh, uh, that make the scope and the changes really uh, shorten. And combining both could be a solution. So that's why everything is possible here. It's a small matter of time, uh, but yeah, that's interesting points. The, the both points. And so back to the issue uh, we discussed earlier today, Stefan. Is, uh, can you just confirm? I just want to be sure because my 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 day is a bit hard. Um, I I am taking care as we agreed of uh, merging, renewing certificate, and updating on CI Jenkins IO. Is that uh, is that okay? Yes. Can I can I ask you to to improve the the pull request body to in the in the update CLI manifest, depending on what you did. Okay. I will add it on the to-do later. And but yeah, uh, that should be okay. I will take take notes on what I'm doing, and then I will yes. open a pull request for the next time. Is that is that okay for awesome. you? Awesome. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So then, um, new pair to add the runbook. Okay.
Any question on this one? Just a reminder, this uh, we'll try to do this uh, most probably tomorrow. Um, don't forget that during the amount of time where the credential will be updated, renewed, and time for me to insert it, the jobs requiring virtual machine on CI Jenkins IO will be stuck on the queue until we are able to uh, to create virtual machine again. Right now, the process overrides the former credentials, so we might have a slowness in the build treatments. Is that okay for everyone? Okay. Uh, next topic. Uh, update center array can you give us a summary uh, while preparing the load test i discovered the flow in a new update center as we are not uh, uh, taking in account uh, uh, certain type of redirection like update uh, dash center dot season questions, uh, version equals uh, specific versions. Um, the current system is using Nginx Ingress to redirect uh, request uh, for a file to Mirobit service, but uh, we can't with Nginx uh, detect uh, and redirect query request with query string without using blocking uh, if in a uh, snippet, uh, engine snippet. So instead of using engine ingress to redirect requests, we will uh, directly use the uh, existing uh, Apache HTTP service, which already include uh, every uh, query string protection uh, with HT access. So we will add a, a VHOST configuration to redirect a remaining request, uh, those without query string, to Mirrorbit service, which will have its own host at mirrors.updates.jenkins.io. Propose our send everything to Apache 2. And had a VOST fallback to a new DNS uh, mirrors.updates.jenkins.io, which send request to. Ah, what's happening? I'm having an issue with my keyboard. Are you sure it's not the cat sitting on your keyboard, Damien? I, I think you need to check for the cat. <laughs> What's up? That's weird. Uh, uh, which sounds... Okay. Damien, if you really want Mark to take notes, you can just ask him, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. Touché. <laughs> Okay, and another safety net that we might do uh, once we have validated that POC is that we we will try to set up Apache so it does not serve any file. It doesn't have any file at all. It will have an empty directory, only the HT access. So if that works with that pattern, that will have a safety net for us to be sure that we don't have outbound bandwidth on Azure. Right. Every file should be redirected to mirror bits and then to a, to a mirror. But that's only theoretical now. We need to be sure that we can have the expected behavior uh, on the new uh, pro architecture proposal that Hervé described. Um, I think that's all. Uh, Hervé, I believe uh, we should be able to to work on this in the upcoming days, even if we have cross day, days off. Um, yeah. Can you confirm what I remember that we discussed earlier today? Same, uh, my brain is full. Um, is that okay if I take care of the pure Apache part and you take care of all the Elm chart stuff around? Is that okay for you? Yes. Cool. And depending on how fast we go, 
Friday, we can work on eventually splitting the shared uh, storage, but I propose we focus on now the ingress redirection and we validate before going forward. Is that okay for you? Yes. Cool. So next step, uh, we have uh, fix the above behavior to handle dynamic URLs with a query string. And then, then back to uh, stress tests and GP review. Um, Did I miss something? Yeah. No. Yes. Uh, I can add that uh, I've got uh, estimation of uh, yeah. Uh, we will add the estimation of uh, current uh, traffic uh, when we'll resume the stress test work. But it's around uh, twenty five megabyte me mm -hmm. megabyte byte per second. You you did say twenty five megabytes per second. Yep. Wow. Okay. Which <laughs> it's about tw two terabytes per day. Right. That, that's a lot of data. Yeah. Yep. And that's really cool uh, to have uh, these measurements. That's uh, what's the name? That's a uh, glorifying metrics. No, it's a uh, show. Ah, there is a wording for that. Um, the kind of metric you use just to show off. Even even in that case, it's marketing it's cool. data. <laughs> vanity, 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 metric. vanity. Yeah. Thanks. That's a cool vanity metric to use for us. Uh, so, Mark, if you have a board meeting soon, don't hesitate to reuse it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We've got to talk in in two weeks. Cool. Uh, thanks, Hervé. Anything else to add on the update center or questions or? No, okay. Yep. So we can proceed forward with that task on the upcoming meeting. Uh, next one, AWS, if it's okay for you folks, since we have the renewal. So uh, the I am permission pattern is going on the right direction. So Stefan and I and Damien have accounts with the expected non-root MFA assume role pattern. So we were able to validate the whole process of adding a new human user. The human user has an encrypted password that only them uh, can decrypt with their own GPG key, not the others. Uh, then you are uh, it's mandated for you to change the password during the first login as uh, admin. Then you must enable MFA, otherwise you have access to nothing. And once you have MFA, you can assume role of infra admin and have access to everything except billing for today. Uh, we will add billing later. So confirm with Stefan, so thanks for the help. Now the... Uh, the work in progress is on setting up technical uh, Terraform IAM users. So we have the permission sets for this that should work, um, but we need to check and compare notes with the, the ops at CloudBees who helped us on uh, drafting this. Uh, they share some code with us. We reuse some concept around the assume role, which has general uh, AWS uh, recommendation, but they helped us because Terraform code was easier to, to bootstrap and then it was easier to understand the numerous concept. But Stefan, can you confirm that looks clear with that code? Yes, not only clear, but it's, it's smart. That's really cool. Uh, the challenge now is to be sure, is there a smart, uh, a way to have non-persistent API keys for the Terraform users? Or do we have to accept that we need a kind of credential like the service principal password that we rely on on Azure? So in that case, that means we need to put in place the same kind of uh, regular three months rotation of that credential to be sure it's not persisted too much. The reason is that for us, uh, we can we need MFA to authenticate and assume role on what we tried with Stefan. 
but we don't have MFA available for technical user with N Jenkins, of course. Or we may have to buy one phone per teraflop bot and <laughs> plug that in the computer and, you know. Every no time way. there is a build. <laughs> and um, start a first EKS cluster. So here we will have a back and forth uh, set of tasks because the today we have a lot of IAM permission that the Terraform users are allowed to do because we are under the management of a cloud biz account which has a different pattern as today. So we were allowed and it, it's not dangerous today to do it. However, with the new account, these permissions are dangerous because that would allow Terraform to have access to administration to higher level permissions, let's say, which we don't want. So I am profile to be managed not by the Terraform module. So today, the Terraform module creating the cluster also create the permission set on uh, I am object. We don't want that anymore because we don't have the permission to do so. So instead, Terraform production will be provided with a role, eventually permission scoped only to that role, and that role will be used by Terraform to give to the EKS cluster. That's the only unknown part here. So we're going to start, and if the cluster fails, we destroy it, update the permission, and recreate. So a lot of back and forth initially. Uh, that's a new, let's say, behavior for us, but that should be OK. Uh, name of the cluster. We all agreed on the name of the cluster. So why I'm smiling here, because I thought there was cluster. a vote, something, no? OK. Yeah, the thing is, uh, not only it's complicated to have the proper name, you know, engineers, but in that case, I mean, <laughs> CI Kate was absolutely to be dropped. That makes no sense unless you have your, your hand deep dive. But we have constraint on the allow characters. Uh, if you have done Azure, you know that the size of the, the in characters of a cluster name can be constrained. Hey, and sometimes it's ridiculous, <laughs> like six characters on Windows, <laughs> really hard. Uh, to have a meaningful name. And EKS is really hard because it takes 15 to 30 minutes to create or destroy. So changing name is not easy. And especially the permission set is hard and we were in need of, if we failed anything, to require uh, help from the cloud biz admin. So in that case, with without the permission I am profile set, uh, we can uh, have a new name that is meaningful. And only one cluster instead of two. That means ACP will be internal only on AWS. Should not change anything, but that means we won't require an ingress with certificate and public access restricted by password as it is today. Less cluster, less credit spend on the cluster. Hervé, Stefan, did I forget something? No, I think it's... No. it's... Do you I, feel... just have, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just have a question about the uh, cluster name. Uh, no plural to agents. I was... Uh, yeah. Sorry, that was a typo. But yeah, you are okay. correct. Or CI Jenkins IO agents. <laughs> Let me add the fallbacks. We talked about the, the fallbacks. CI Geo agents. Is that okay for the, the fallbacks, Ravi? Yep. Yeah. And do you feel I've shared enough information for not letting you on the shadows, folks? On the whole AWS star bootstrap topic? No, I feel that it's it's good. The reason why I'm asking is just to be sure we have the right balance between going forward and helping Mark on asking for new credits and renewal and consuming credits versus making it maintainable not only by me. Agreed. So don't hesitate to raise your voice if you want to be involved a bit more on that priority topic. We could later create a new staging cluster to consume a bit more money and to be sure that we <laughs> can manage this kind of operation. Yes, and if we really need to consume credits, I mean, we can absolutely set up a temporary user and have CI Jenkins create virtual machines here. 
but we also need Packer and stuff. So that's why the, the cluster seems the right balance, but yeah. Or, or if anyone has a blockchain to generate. I, mean, <laughs> I was I was more on the bomb good. build, but okay. <laughs> that will be the first target. Um, okay, then GDK, any other question or clarification on the topic of AWS sponsored account bootstrap? Okay, so then I'm moving to the GDK patch upgrade campaign topic. Should be quick. So um, it's been one week and we are uh, since the release of a patch for GDK 8, 11, 17, and 21, and 22, but we don't use it yet. Um, issue written to have a map of where to upgrade GDKs. The reason is that as uh, pointed by Basile a few weeks ago, that could be interesting for the GDK 11 depreciation to start thinking where are the processes. So the goal of that issue is not, is for tracking our work, of course, and say, oh, it's complete, but not only. It's also to have a list of um, every location where we need to update GDKs. We have GDK for running controllers, GDK for running agent and GDK for uh, as tools for developers. I have omitted for now the GDK used to run applications such as account app. I don't mind adding it on the issue if needed. That could be interesting because it's a GDK upgrade. Um, regarding the tools, uh, tools GDK should be up to date. Uh, I haven't commented out the issue. I need to link the pull request, but all the tools on CIG infra CI have been updated and trusted and uh, cert. And release CI doesn't have any tools, so it doesn't need anything. Um, whip on controller agent images. So it's not to track the work on the official images, it's just to be sure that once we have updated images for LTS weekly on controller or new agent with new GDK, if we have images inheriting from these images, we have to update them, especially for agents. And so agents, uh, let's um, verify with Stefan List. Uh, to compare when you move the things between the all in the move from container agent to all in one on Packer that has been upgraded, but also others such as Web Builder. The goal is to compare, we don't forget an agent image. Yes. Um, so we have Packer images, the window container agents, I uh, will mention them uh, later. Uh, Web Builder is the one that was identified on Stefan work, and I've added the Docker packaging image as well because the Docker packaging image is used by release CI to when we have a record release, and it inherits from the official agent image. So these, uh, yeah, Mark, I see you are raising your hand. Yeah. So, so one of the things we've seen with this release is that sometimes one of the crucial one of the needed container or one of the needed jdk images is, or jdk builds is not yet available in this case 11.0.23 is not yet available for alpine and and the control the controller images intentionally keep all controller images of 11.0 at the same build version, even if it means we have to wait a little longer. I assume that that's okay, at least from the controller and agent side, that we hold that pattern, that we don't allow ourselves to run 11.0.22 on Alpine and 23 on everything else. Absolutely. Okay, good. That Just makes sense. Great. In the case of the infrastructure, the pure infrastructure, the goal is for us to move towards the Packer image all in one image where we install from the binary only on Ubuntu. So we control the update and we don't have to wait for the uh, agent, uh, the parent agent availability. That's different for the controllers, of course, but that's a different topic. And that's a way for us to keep track of what do we need to move in the all in one agent. And in fact, these are the three next big one, if I'm 
not mistaken. Great. Thank you. Stéphane, does it does it check out with what you had in mind, even if it's not exhaustive and we might have others? Yeah, we need to check on the on the issue of uh, of the all in one AM sixty four, but from from the top of my brain, yes, it's it's matching. Web builder and packaging. Cool. So now I, I need to update the issue, of course, uh, with what is the status today. But yeah, tool CDK, Packer image are OK. Um, and Windows container are next. So the Windows container agent image only of the Jenkins infra, not the official ones. These are different topics. Is there any question? So no. that gives me transition to the next. Sorry, I heard the sound. Oh, no, okay. like splattering uh, keyboard. Hervé? I was saying, okay. no, I have no question. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we hear him, we hear him, but no question. Yeah, thanks. So the next one, um, while trying to update it, check the GDK because I saw the pull requests were automatically open for the four GDK for the Windows uh, agent. The Docker inbound agent for Jenkins in only. Uh, but it's been one month that we don't provide updates on these images. These images are used by CI Jenkins IO for all the container build of plugins uh, in ACI. So there is an issue with the testing framework. And since the 20 March, 2024, uh, the CST framework is not able to properly handle Windows images. So different uh, fixed test phase to allow GDK upgrades. A different strategy here, I haven't selected one. I'm mentioning all of them and I will uh, write this down the issue. Uh, disabling test temporarily. The tests are checking the image itself. Um, adding uh, uh, rollbacking some O, either on pack, the general Packer image or only on this pipeline to the last known working version of CST. Uh, switching to GOS, because as the work for, uh, by uh, Stefan uh, demonstrated during the past months, we can use GOS on Windows. So changing from CST to GOS could be a way out here. But the goal is to deliver the new GDK upgrade as part of the previous issue. Disable tests. Um, roll back to CST that known to work on Windows. Move to GUS. Is that clear? Does it make sense? Or do you have question, suggestion? Okay, uh, so gotta take care of this one soon. Um, I'm having a look. I'm trying to prioritize out of my head. Uh, uh, HTTP 429. So the rate limit on Docker Hub. Uh, we've successfully delivered the last images, uh, agents last Monday, weekly image Tuesday and LTS Wednesday without any uh, further issue. So at least we are, for me, that issue is closable. Um, today's Docker image for controller embeds the work uh, that uh, Bruno and Hervé did on the official images to reduce the amount of layers. I haven't seen if we have issues, but if we have, that will be minor or just on one platform. Um, agent images are not merged yet for different reasons, uh, but we are in the right direction. So I propose that from the Jenkins Infra point of view that we close that issue because we don't see any other risks related to the Docker Hub rate limits. Is that okay for everyone? And if it is, yes. I will take care of attending today's platform SIG to say, hey, now it's your problem. <laughs> of course. Looking forward to that. Hervé, do you share that thing? I believe we discussed that, but I just want to be sure uh, that it's okay for you. Yes, it's okay. Yeah, sure. Close it. Yeah, no problem. Move the last 
image changes to the platform. Cool. Thanks for the work. That's a lot of work, but that's a lot to clean up. Any questions so far? Okay, next one, support for Visual Studio in Windows container images. So we will have to update slightly the title, only Windows <laughs> VM images. Uh, CI.G ephemeral agents. Uh, so Alex and Stefan, Alex Hurl and Stefan uh, worked on installing VS 2019, which is required um, requirement for building WinP on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, Stefan, uh, can I let you summarize the status of this one just to be sure I don't miss anything? In fact, um, uh, Hervé just launched a sixth try of the of the pull request from uh, Alex, and uh, and we're waiting to see if he if he managed to solve the problem with uh, Windows two thousand twenty, and but it's still uh, under run. And okay. the problem is that the. Uh, the VS code installation seems to work nicely on, on the 2019 version, but not all the time. There's flakiness. And on the other one, it's it's always fail on a step. So we are assuming that the, the specification for that installation, because there is a config file, is um, not compliant with the new version of Windows. But um, the last message we received from Alex was, oh, I think I found out. So we'll see. Then that was during that meeting. Thanks, Hervé, to have launched the, the build. Something to Pierrick. Any question here? Thanks for the wall, folks. Uh, great thanks also to Alex, who is really more efficient than we are on PowerShell <laughs> and Windows. Uh, but yeah, nice work. It's nice to have the Windows installer maintainer also involved in this. That's that's really great. Thanks, Alex. Um, we were thinking so... about proposing him. Yeah, we were propos uh, thinking about proposing him uh, maintainer access on the repo, open a request oh, to get uh, yeah. VPN access. I forgot too. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, good reminder. So. Uh, we wanted to mention officially if it helps Alex and if he needs it. So if you want and feel it needs it, I'm proposing that we give him maintainer access to the Packer images repository. So his builds will be automatically triggered and also asking him and validating if he does it to open VPN access so he can access infra CI and, and watch the logs. Uh, the reason is that we don't want to open this repository too much, at, at least on terms of CI, because it involves credentials that create resources on different clouds, which we don't want. And the Jenkins file trusted system is not enough in the current state of the pipeline because we call some shell scripts. So the shell script could be abused to retrieve these credentials. That's the reason why the builds are not triggered and if it helps Alex, we can give him this maintenance surfing. So we need to ask him, Stefan, is that okay for you to ask him directly? Yeah. But first, as you as you as we discussed, first, is there anyone against giving Alex maintainer uh, permission on the repository and VPN access to infra CI if he needs them to finish that work or the WinP related work? Any objection? No objection. Alex has been a great contributor for many, many years. And he apparently now works for ARM. He used to work for Broadcom. Yes. Now he works for ARM, as far as I understand it. So, yeah, I think we're very interested in him. Let's roll. No objection during team meeting. No objection one. No objection two, no objection three. Cool. Let's roll.
maybe he doesn't want, but better being all in agreement so we can quickly add the permission if he is okay. Uh, Stefan, can you just give us a summary on the storage migration, which is uh, important, but we want to delay partially since you will be off? Yeah, the idea is to save some money because we are using right now premium storage classes and we discovered with the metrics that it will be good enough with the standard one. Um, but the migration implied to um, migrate the data from one storage to the other. Uh, so I did already uh, created the new storage classes for both private KLS and public KLS. So it's it's available. And then the next step will be to, to first start with the weekly CI, which is the less dangerous one and um, and to um, I prepared a, a process and that will be able, that will offer the opportunity to check that process and if it's good enough we will do with infra and uh, and uh, release Nice. So you created the um, uh, storage class. Is that uh, is that yes. true? Yeah. Is that okay? Storage class created. Yeah, and we did together the, the move the for the the old one to rename it. To do um, weekly CI. So is that okay if we say Monday, we don't next work Monday. on next no. Monday? You will be okay. Uh, I'm okay. No, I'm just, I don't remember I what we said it was. I forgot. Twenty. Uh, yeah, I think it's next next Monday. Okay, so that means we keep it on the we'll milestone. Yeah. Okay. Weekly CI. Um, next week Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, looks good to me. No objection. No. Nothing okay. else. Okay. Kevin say no. No. <laughs> Kevin want to use this expensive SSD, right? <laughs> Instead dream. of the cheaper one. <laughs> we will send you one. <laughs> um, okay. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Oh, I see. Um, about the audits of uh, plugins. So, Damien need to send an email to request help from developer still um, nothing else on that topic so uh, i will remove this one from the milestone as soon as i will have uh, sent the email so i will most probably remove it from any milestone until we have an agreement on how to do it because we don't have the uh, ability the availability to do it right now on the team any question? Looks like we've lost Mark. <laughs> no, he said, he said bye. Oh, okay. While I was uh, speaking, he said bye. Um, we have uh, the move the Jenkins stat back to backlog. No, uh, no capacity, no team capacity. And same for the plugin site API. Um, issue. Any objection on moving back this to, to changelog? Okay. Uh, Hervé, just a question you mentioned, is that Ostico that require FTP? Yeah. Yes, it's Ostico who provides us uh, an FTP access with user pass and password that mm. we have to check if mirror bits can take in account. It okay, looks sure. like it, but I didn't manage to test it yet. Mm -hmm. OK. For the other, waiting for um, mirror provider feedback, HTTPS missing on their side. Yes. Is my memory yes, good? Yes, it's correct. Cool. Uh, let's have a look at the issue to triage, if it's okay for you, before leaving. 
Okay, so on the triage we have, I've opened an issue design and automated update mechanism uh, for the private repository Terraform TF state. So that's the process that Stefan did on the public repositories Azure and Azure Net for Terraform uh, credential expiration detection with the update CLI automatic pull request that we mentioned. In the case of Terraform states that a private repository um, so we need a way to clone the private repository first, which can be dangerous if we do it on infra CI, because that means we need a token that can be abused. Um, so we might need to do GHA or find a solution on Jenkins. Secondly, we cannot run any checks, or at least we will only run partial checks on the pull request because we don't have the credentials available to connect to the clouds because that's a uh, repository is used to bootstrap the project and require a such root credential, uh, root credential on each cloud. In the case of Cloudflare, we need to connect with the root credential, generate a temporary API key, use it for the change and then delete it. We cannot do that on an automated process, of course, for security reasons. So maybe we will have to update. So that's why I've tried to explain as much as possible that kind. I don't think we will be able to work on it. Um, so I propose I won't, I will remove the triage label on it, but I won't schedule it on a milestone. If you think you want to work on it or that might need to be challenged, don't hesitate and we can add it and assign it. Maybe it's on a review work. I don't know if you have ideas, but don't hesitate to read it and check if I didn't forget anything. Is that okay? Um, yes. uh, backlog. Next issue, add war that ask to get Jenkins IO. Um, that, uh, that is a request from Basil that will require updating the core release process. So the, the dot ask files that contain the GPG signature uh, will have to be copied uh, from uh, GFrog repository to first the updates Jenkins IO machine and then to get Jenkins IO mirrors. Uh, I propose to postpone this one of two weeks and I will add a comment saying, we'll start thinking about this one in two weeks because we won't have the availability. Any objection or need for clarification? Okay, uh, we have one that we need to add to the milestone. Um, looks like that sometimes the reporting of the plugin health core, the report generation that we have put in place uh, one or two weeks ago, sometimes generate an empty JSON file, which fails the plugin site generation as reported by Spinic. So we will need to find a solution, improve or roll back to the API calls for now. Um, I'm adding it to the current milestone. If no one object, I will uh, take it because I will work with Adrien Le Charpentier yeah. all this Friday. Say, we need so to ping that Adrien. Be, uh, that will be a way for uh, bearing on that topic if that's okay for everyone. Okay. Adding to current milestone. Uh, and I think that's all for the triage. Oh yeah, I've opened one. I will postpone it of two weeks. Uh, we will need to add one or two additional public IPs on the NAT gateway of the infra subnet where we have the Packer images. We have a lot of failing builds on Windows Packer images due to chocolatey registry saying, hey, too much requests. It's because we do everything from a single outbound public IP. Same problem as Docker registry. Except here it's not trusted, uh, it's infra CI and it's only the subnet where Packer virtual machines are uh, have outgoing requests. So maybe, I don't remember if the NAT gateway is shared between all subnets or just this one, but the target is only where we have Packer VMs, not the agents. So I propose to postpone in two weeks. 
that's that will be an easy one on Terraform uh, Azure Net, but yeah, postpone to May because it's not critical. Okay, is there any more issue or topic you want to bring for today? Yes, just to say that uh, uh, Jenkins and Fra and Weekly are up to date. Thanks. And that the Windows 22 image oh. from a uh, slide uh, pull request is passing. Oh, yeah. Nice work, We're folks. Waiting on the 91, yeah. 19 one to finish. And, yeah. yeah, 2019 is still, is still running. Cool. Good work, folks. Oh, I don't have that, anything else. So I'm going to update notes recording as usual, uh, milestones, and see you next week then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.